when it comes to, you know, things like consensual non-consent and exposure and, you know, B-mail and things like that, like it can get out of hand real quick. Like it's a very fine line. So you really got to know what you're doing. Spill the kink for me. Welcome back to another episode of Spill the King. Today we are with goddess AJ, which I'm so excited that we are doing this at last. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so AJ, how are you? I'm wonderful. I'm always wonderful in my world. And how are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. So give us a little bit of an intro for everyone that doesn't know you. Yeah, so... Hi, I'm AJ. Um, I'm from Melbourne, Australia. I'm a practicing FinDom, FemDom full-time. I've been doing this full-time since the start of this year, um, but I've been active in the BDSM community for over 10 years now, so I am clocking into my 30s. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm definitely more like FemDom-focused. Um, FinDom is something that's actually a little bit more newer to me, doing it in a more, I guess, um, online sort of space. I've always dated sort of subs and I guess Findom sort of was happening, but I wasn't really aware of it. So that's sort of what got me into it, I guess. Oh, that's the same with me. The way I like became a dom was that I was dating subs. And yeah. Yeah. And that's how I turned dom. And I had no clue about Findom. Zero. I was exactly the same. Until uh, Paypig slid into my DMs on my um, uh, vanilla account. And I was yeah. like... Uh, what now? What, what you want? You want to what? You want me to what? <laughs> yeah, I think back to all those messages I used to get on like my personal vanilla accounts and been like, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> and <laughs> so many missed opportunities. <laughs> we could have had fun. How did you get into Findom? So basically, I got into Findom through relationships with subs, so dating them and, you know, doing the whole Findom dynamic with my partners. And then when it came to doing it online, I, I think I'd like had a conversation with someone at one of like the BDSM parties. I don't know. It was like a really, it was a big night. I'll say that. And um, they were just like, yeah, I do this online, like all the time. I'm like, what? people do this online. I'm like, well, of course they do it online. Like I've done femdom online. So I guess it made sense. So I just thought, you know what, let's make a Twitter. Cause I know that Twitter is generally pretty good for not safe for work thing. And as soon as I made it, I just saw all these other doms come up and I was like, what is this world that I didn't even know about? And then it just kind of went from there, I guess. And I just started talking with people like yourself and yeah. Yeah, it's it, you know what's shocking is as soon as like you you go on Twitter, you make like an account, and then the algorithm like immediately recognizes like what type kind of account it is, and then all of a sudden you're Absolutely. bombarded, you know? Yeah, like I completely forget that Twitter. There's a whole other world to Twitter. It's not just like Findom. Oh <laughs> yeah, <Findom> app. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like my brain is like Twitter is a Findom app, right? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like BDSM. And like, I, I've used other apps, but yeah, Twitter just seems to be it for me. I think because it's so visual and I'm a visual person. I'm a creative person. So mm. it kind of works well. Yeah, definitely. Though it is kind of tricky. Like you can get very easily shadow banned. Oh, I reckon I would get shadow banned at least like every couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been shadow banned in a while, but in the beginning, it was like my Twitter was dead. Like my tweets would not get out at all, like nothing. It took me months to get out of it. Yeah, it definitely takes having to learn what it likes in the algorithm and what it doesn't and what flags it. Like I realized I can't say blow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but that will allow some, you know, pretty full on stuff visually, you know, even scat and everything. And that, that's quite fine. I was actually having a laugh last night with one of my Dom friends that maybe some of the people who are running it and moderating it might not be into farts because they're not letting her post her fart audio videos. <laughs> <laughs> but th they will let people literally take a shit on there. Isn't, yeah, we're having a good little laugh about that. Isn't that <laughs> funny, though? Like they will shadow ban like it a is. tweet that says like, I don't know, cash cow or pay pig. Yeah. And, and then they will allow like a full on spicy tape. 
funny. That is so funny. Like they're like, oh yeah, full on nudity. See everything. Fine. Write the word pay pig. Shadow banned. So tell me, AJ, a little bit about your transition from like real life BDSM to like online BDSM. For me, it was like quite a big transition. Um, for me, like I think it's happened pretty naturally. Um, I I think I made a bit of the change to sort of step away a little bit from being as active as I was in the BDSM community because like, well, I fell in love. <laughs> so that definitely can change things. Um, and, you know, the dynamic I'm in with my partner definitely um, satisfies me in that way. But mm -hmm. when it comes to, I guess, um, you know, having different play partners and still being able to explore because I feel like we're always learning. Mm -hmm. I'm always discovering new things about myself and... You know, that's where I feel like the online BDSM community, like, is great. Yeah. And it's still a place that I can still play and meet beautiful, like-minded, you know, individuals there. So I think the transition's definitely been an easy one for me. I still have subs that serve me in person, but it's definitely, like, um, not, you know, spicy in any way, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. It's, like, strictly either like foot worship or fandom. Yeah. And how does your like, I don't if you're not comfortable answering this, it's fine. But like, how does your partner feel with you being like a fandom femdom? So my partner is the most supporting, beautiful person on this planet. Oh. Like, they celebrate every single win that I have. We celebrate it together. Um, and we have like, it's the first time I've sort of been in a sort of switch dynamic, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. um, so everything is very equal and like we're, we're just made for each other. So they're supportive in every single way with me. My family also knows I do this. Mm -hmm. So and they're also very supportive. So I'm very blessed like that. Yeah, my family knows as well. Like I never found a reason to like hide it. Yeah, no, me neither. And I think too, because like, I when I was like, you know, 18, 19, back then, like I did a bit of spicy work. I was um, doing like sort of like erotic events and doing burlesque shows and photo shoots. I've been published in like a few magazines, like, you know, uh, what would you call them? Like AG. little nudie magazines and things like that. You know, Zoo Magazine, A Ralph, that sort of thing when A I was about 18, 19. AJ, you have so, been hiding from me? You have been yeah. hiding things from me? <laughs> what? So, what? Burlesque? I did, go, I did okay. go by a different name. I went by a different name and I also had black hair. So I looked very, very different to what I do now. Um, so yeah, I've, I've worked like, you know, in the adult entertainment industry for most of my life, as well as doing other, you know, jobs and passions as well. But yeah, I've always dabbled in it some way. So exciting. How did you get into burlesque? You got to tell me. You're like, I have to know. Oh, I I love it and I miss it so much. Um, so I basically, like, growing up, I always was doing, like, musical theater and all that kind of performing. And then when I started doing a bit of, like, alternative modeling, um, I just kind of fell into it. Like, I got asked if I would perform because they knew that I had a background. They needed someone to fill in. For this company that I used to model with, they also did like events. Mm -hmm. And so they asked me if I would fill in. And I was like, sure, I haven't done it in a while, but like, you know, why not? Did it have the time of my life? And I'm like, yeah, this is what I was born to do. So I was doing events like, you know, back to back through my weekends and then working a vanilla job during the week. And um, yeah, I just absolutely loved it. I did it for a very, very long time. And I just um, got really, really sick, uh, and that sort of was what stopped me doing that sort of thing. So I had a chronic illness, uh, which I still uh. technically have, but it's more manageable, so POTS. I guess that's when things sort of slowed down a little bit for me with the performing. I sort of stuck to just doing the modeling and some creative projects, mm -hmm. and yeah, and I guess that's when sort of like the femdom sort of things started to rise, because I actually like got into like femdom in person through doing those like burlesque and entertainment events because like I would be you know doing like a private burlesque dance for someone mm -hmm. and you know they would be like oh would you mind you know if I kissed your boots or you know that mm -hmm. sort of thing and I was like oh actually I would really enjoy that <laughs> <laughs> and 
yeah, and then it just kind of went from there and I started attending more and more BDSM events around in Melbourne and yeah, the rest is history. Okay, because I thought maybe because of like the illness that you said like that you stopped for a bit, but that's basically the reason. Okay. Tell me about those BDSM events. So the ones I went to, it was definitely more, I guess, like private events. It wasn't like, um, you know, any sort of like you buy a ticket, turn up sort of thing. It was more of like a private community. Mm -hmm. So a lot of us who were in these, um, I guess, entertainment groups, we were all, you know, a bit spicy into, you know, certain kinks and things Mm -hmm. like that. And so we would just be like, what are you doing this weekend? So it was kind of more of like, I guess, parties, little BDSM parties. And But we we were creative people. We were all performers. We were all artists in some, you know, way, shape or form. So, you know, we would have different themes and dress-ups or certain events like that we would set up would be specifically around a type of kink or whatever. So, yeah, they were definitely like more on the intimate side of things, like around like, you know, maybe 10 people in attendance. But then we'd have some big ones too where it would be like, you know, up to 50, 100 people. But those ones we sort of only threw maybe like twice a year. That sounds like really fun. It was. That was my 20s. It was amazing. (laughs) (laughs) That was my 20s. It sounds like an era, you know, like they say the 40s or the 20s. The way you said it it sounded like an era. Yeah. That was the 20s. I'm a vampire in actuality. It was. was. (laughs) Tell me a little bit about like your subs, like, your experience going in and the subs like were they different than having real life subs being a dom online is completely different to being a dom in person i feel like online you definitely come across a lot more time wasters Mm -hmm. um you definitely come across more bratty subs um and for me a bratty sub isn't something that personally gets me going Um, you know, I like to see complete devotion, servitude and surrender. So I think that's probably been the most painful part with doing it online is it's, it's so open. It's such a big world that you come across so many different types of people, such as many different kinds of subs, and they're not always the greatest. (laughs) Yeah, I I get what you mean. Like, especially I think, for me, the biggest thing to adapt to was being able to recognize time wasters because like when I first started I would respond to like most DMs because like you know in real life when you meet a sub you talk to them right so I just applied that online and now for example I don't respond to any DMs unless there's initial tribute sent I don't care how many times you send me a message I don't care if you're asking me about my payment methods bitch I got everything on my profile (laughs) Exactly. Like I even have above my payment methods in my link, like, you know, here's an about me section, read that. And then you may approach Mm -hmm. because like there is so much time spent like vetting and seeing if you're fit, like fit for each other. And then that's lost time with, you know, my current loyal subs and, you know, doing something that I know that's going to be fulfilling. Like we're taking just as much as a chance on this as what the subs are when they're reaching out to us. So you definitely have to become a professional stalker if you're going to be an online dom (laughs) and know how to really (laughs) sift through someone's profile when they message you. Because I've had I've had some subs who have approached me without tribute and we've gone on to have a fantastic dynamic later on, Um, you know, because we clicked. But that is a very, very rare occurrence. And that that's why we do set these initials these initial tributes mm-hmm. um no you're completely right you need to like vet you need to you know make sure that you're not i think that, like the only person that can really waste your time is yourself exactly and that's something that i say to baby doms over and over again who come to me and say oh i've got another time waster my time is wasted again and i'm like you are the only one who's in control of that mm-hmm. like if you reply that's on you and the same goes for Like, I know it's pretty controversial for some people, but Dom's approaching. Mm -hmm. Um, I will 100% approach first. If you're lurking and you're liking all my shit, commenting on my stuff, you know, but you haven't sent me a message, I'll call you out. Like, absolutely. But am I going to expect you to pay tribute my initial? No, Mm -hmm. because I'm the one who's, you know, approached you in that sort of sense. I'm a dominant. I'm going to approach my prey. 
I'm going to pounce. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, um, though, if that's like a person that's liking and lurking for a long time, that's different than just randomly like DMing people. Exactly. It's, yeah. it's completely different. And, you know, if you're having like, you know, a fun little, I guess, what would you call it? A little appetizer or foreplay of liking each other's, you know, content. Like, because I have some subs that post some incredible content mm -hmm. and like, and we're going on like a little back and forth with that. Like, I can already tell that we click. So we'll jump straight into a dynamic. Yeah. We don't need to do, you know, the full vetting and, you know, send me my initial, like, it's it's a whole different world. It's and with anything when it comes to this, every dynamic is different. Yeah, yeah, De no, definitely. So, how do you like to start a dynamic with like a sub? So, when they send the initial tribute and stuff, like, what do you? How do you proceed from that? For me, for example, like I will ask them to introduce themselves, and I'll tell them, "Tell me your limits and your kinks," and then based on that, like I'll respond. Yeah, I'm very similar in that sort of matter, and I guess you know it's hard to make it not come across as you're interrogating or interviewing them but it, it really is an interview oh, i am yeah. interviewing you if mm -hmm. i'm being honest oh, oh yeah <laughs> so i i'm very direct and i'll be like what has brought you here mm -hmm. and they will usually answer you know oh it's because i saw this piece of content of yours or i've been lurking for a while and i want to serve you i would be like okay how do you wish to serve me mm -hmm. um and then they'll go on to say and i'll be like okay you know, and if they haven't made it already clear what their kinks are, you know, I will find out then. I will ask them. I'll share mine. I also have tried to streamline this process a little bit because I know it can, you know, sometimes kill the mood a little bit doing the kind of interview process. So that's why I have got like a little about me thing on my Reddit that I've got pinned in my links. Uh -huh. um, so if they want to go have a look at what my kinks are and everything, it's all there, easy to see. But yeah, I, I'm very similar to you. I would just ask them those questions and find out, you know, what those limits are and also let them know mine because I want them to be respected. And it, what they're looking for, is it a session? Is it content buying? Is it a, you know, a long-term or short-term dynamic? Yeah, like, though a yeah. lot of them won't really... I know this is I don't know if you've had this but like a lot of online subs they cannot communicate to save their lives. Oh, they they have no idea. They don't even know what they want. <laughs> they want me to tell them what they want. Yeah. Um 100%. I I agree with that so much. You'll be like, "So, what are you looking for?" and they're like, "I don't know. What are your kinks? I don't know. My pet my biggest pet peeve, what are your limits? I don't have any." I'm like, "Bitch, I'll slap you and your head will turn 360 uh, degrees." What? Like, of course, exactly. you got limits. And 100%. And, like, I, I do get that a lot, more often than not, which is quite horrible. But I kind of either, A, end up deciding this isn't going to be the dynamic for me, like you're too inexperienced. Um, I definitely do, like, training and obedience training and all sorts of sub-training. But if they come to me already knowing that that's what they want, yeah. But if they like have absolutely zero idea, they're, you know, very young and fresh to it all. Look, I'm probably not the dom for you. I do. I know what I want. And that's what I want to get. And I'm yeah. probably not going to find it in someone who's incredibly inexperienced and doesn't know what they want. Yeah, I don't. I should be the one that they want. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't mind yeah. having subs that are completely inexperienced as long as they listen to what like the rules. Like I had um, exactly last week, I had this sub that was like really new. Like apparently, I was his first dom and stuff, and I'm pretty sure he was not oh, happy. That's so cute. Yeah, and I, I'm pretty sure he was not happy how it ended. Um, but I was like, okay, well, you need to follow these rules. So I list the rules and I tell him that you this is not like a McDonald's drive-through. You do not order things. You do not like get you know <laughs> ask for things and pay for them. I'm not like a cam girl, which again, nothing bad with cam girls. Just it's a different thing you know so you don't pay for a specific thing i you know and i was like if you are you can tell me what you like etc and if i'm happy with what you do then i will reward you if i'm not happy then i'll punish you right so Absolutely. anyway and like i've said this in like another interview as well but like anyways he kept like persistently like asking for like feet or i don't remember what it was feet i think and I tell him once, twice, three times. So at the third time, I was like, dude, like, I'm, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be your dom. And he was like, mm -hmm. oh, let me send like an apology send or something. And I'll, and he sends 30 for an apology. 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> and like, that's the thing too. If it's something we're really not into, like, I, I don't care if you give me your entire life savings. If I'm not enjoying this, I don't want it. You, yeah. Like, yeah I love money. I love money. Obviously, I have a money kink. But like, if we're tying some sort of femdom into this, like, into findom, mm-hmm. then it's got to be something that I enjoy. Otherwise, it's going to be strictly findom. So, yeah. yeah. Definitely. He's a fool. Definitely. And, you know, if you're coming, uh, you know, like if you're sending 30 as like a tribute and then you send 30 as an apology, it just it, it common sense like that 30 would not be an apology. Yeah. You know, exactly. Like exactly. common sense. Common sense doesn't seem to be all that common. I'm noticing. <laughs> <gasps> yeah. From all sides. From all sides. Yeah. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Like the amount mm-hmm. of baby doms i see with no verification like when i say verification i don't mean a verification video i mean like age verification yes absolutely and that's oh that's something that just drives me crazy too because i i require my subs to have age verification um because and i say to them straight out as soon as they start going oh but you know i'm 35 or i'm 64 and i'm like cool like i trust you mate but the thing is i want you to serve me i don't want to serve jail time so you're gonna have to prove it or we're not playing yeah simple Mm -hmm. that's it yeah yeah no definitely definitely it's crazy so tell me a little bit like what's your longest sub relationship that you've had my longest sub relationship i've had would probably be just shy of three years of like constant ongoing but i've had many subs where like they've served me for a couple of weeks or a couple of months and then we'll go our separate ways and then they come back and it's on and off, hot and cold, you know. Um, it just, yeah, it just really, really depends. But yeah, the longest re- like dynamic I've had would probably be about three years. And how about online? Online, mm-hmm. I would say the longest would be about six months. Yeah, okay. I'm. I feel like I'm very brutal when it comes to my expectations with my online subs because I'm not someone who particularly wants to be attached to their phone talking all day every day and I am finding that my long-term dynamics that I have come across online that has definitely been an expectation on their side Mm -hmm. and it leads to me getting bored if my needs aren't getting met yeah I get that I get that Mm-hmm. yeah so it, it's probably a bit rough to say but like we're we're all here to you know experience pleasure right and if I'm not experiencing it then I'm not gonna stay yeah and for me like if you're like if the sub is not like uh wanting to make my life better wanting to make me happy um in any way like small or big then you know and the only mm-hmm. focus on their pleasure or what they want and stuff like I'll fire them so quickly. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, I think it just ties back into what I was saying before about how I'm finding that some of the subs that I have finding me um, are definitely a lot more on that sort of brattier side. And so they might start out being really consistent and, you know, completely putting me first, making me their priority. But then within a couple of weeks, I'm starting to see that sort of, um, I guess, them trying to top from the bottom or make it all about them. And then at that point, I'm like, yeah, no, I'm done. Bye. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, though, I just like I fired like a month ago, I think it was like a sub that I've had for a couple of I think for like about two months or something um, I had Mm -hmm. him from like Twitch and I got annoyed at him because it was always like, you know, me, me, me kind of thing. And then I like he messaged me and I replied with send me like send for coffee because I wanted coffee at that moment. I just woken up and he was like, no, Mm -hmm. I don't want to be hard or something at work or something, something. I'm like, bitch, this ain't a drain. What the fuck? Like not everything Uh. is about your like pencil. You know, like a hundred percent. Nothing shits me more than waking up to DMs without a coffee attached to it. It is a goddamn coffee. It is so minimal and cheap. And if you can't even send me a coffee, then nah. (laughs) Do not talk to me. (laughs) Yeah, and and for me it was like, you know how much like A, I'm a coffee drinker. B, I just woke up and you like I tell you this, and your thought is about like your pencil. 
This is not mm-hmm. like, you know, that should not be your priority. Your priority should be like, oh, my goddess woke up and I know she enjoys coffee. That's so fun. I'm going to send yeah. for her to get coffee. Yeah, absolutely. And like, I've had some really, really loyal subs who have sent me a lot, a lot of money. Yeah. And like, but that doesn't change, you know, my loyal subs that I have who I would wake up to every day with a message going, I hope you have a beautiful day ahead. You deserve it. You know, here's a coffee. Enjoy. Like, or like they, like the ones that I trusted and had, you know, in person, they would have it turn up at my door because they knew what time I was getting up. And that, that sometimes can feel so much more than big sense, especially like when, like you mentioned the other day with like whale subs, they'll come by and then piss off. Like they come yeah. quick and then they go on just as fast as they, you know, come swimming on in. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, waking up to those beautiful messages, you know, wishing you a wonderful day with a coffee, mm-hmm. sometimes they can mean more. Oh, definitely. And that's something that I'm finding. Yeah, that's something that I'm finding. Like I've had a couple of um, my smaller sending subs get upset or pick a fight with me or say that they want to leave because they've seen that I've gotten, you know, a big send, like when I got my motorcycle, for example. Um, Mm -hmm. And I'm like, sweetheart, like this doesn't change anything between our dynamic between us. Are we still talking? Are we still playing? Then what you're giving me is obviously giving me something, the fact I'm sticking around. Oh, yeah. Like I had a whale sub like in August that sent like 5K, which – by the way, absolutely loved it. One of my favorite subs ever. He came in, sent 5K, and fucked off. <laughs> right. I'm pretty sure. Was that through Throne? Yeah. Yeah, I think I was awake and saw those popping up. You probably, maybe, because, like, I just wrote on Twitter because I don't, I don't know who it is. I still don't. Um, so I just, I was like, I'm just going to write on Twitter, like, do it again. And he did. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's so hot. I love it. Um, <laughs> you know, and honestly, he is one of my favorite subs, even though I don't know who it is, because it was just, like, so random and so out of nowhere. And he had some it's messages. so exciting. Yeah, and he had some messages attached to the throne, you know, uh, thingy. And I was like, I love it. But... You know, the subs where I have long term and they will, for example, send, you know, they know like I I, I had like, I don't know, I didn't sleep well. So they sent for a coffee or they know that I'm kind of sad or something. So they sent for flowers or something. Those subs yes. are my top like my my yes. um, my in real life sub. Uh, he's you know, he's Greek, so he doesn't like make a lot of money. He like when he he knew that like one day I was kind of like down like the the when I posted about the flowers and he just sent Mm -hmm. flowers because he knew that like I really like sunflowers so he made sure like there were sunflowers and if anything that bouquet is probably one of the cheapest ones that they would have sold in the place but I was just so happy you know or like a couple of days ago I was going to get my tattoo finished and he knew that, like, I, you know, I kind of complained to him. I was like, I, you know, all my clothes are dirty and I want to wear something comfortable and blah, 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 blah. So he sent with, like, a delivery, like, uh, biker, Nike biker short, legging shorts and, like, a like mm. uh, an oversized, like, Vans t-shirt. You know, just because, like, that he knew. So yeah, just because he knew, you know, and they weren't expensive. I think, like, tops, they must have cost, like, 60 euros, like, 60, 70 dollars, you know. Um, but yeah. it's just because, like, he knew that, you know, I told him that, you know, I d- my clothes are dirty, blah, 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 and I don't have anything comfortable to wear. And I was just kind of, like, murmur, you know, grumpy because I am a grumpy ass. And he was like, oh, yeah, here you go. And I was like, oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even say goodbye. See, I was that- like, thank you. <laughs> That that is just gorgeous, and that that's exactly what it's about. And I think that's what I think a lot of subs forget about is that it's not about it being the most expensive gift or the most amount of money, your whole paycheck or something like that. It's the fact that you're doing the best you can with what you got, and you like completely submitting yourself and serving me the best that you can to your ability and I know that you're doing it to the best of your ability that is what we want 
Yeah, I think a lot of subs online um, have forgotten that they're supposed to be worshiping and what worship means. And they just kind of yeah. sexualize everything for their for them. They just like it seems like they nowadays it kind of expect and view that, oh, I will get some sexual satisfaction and I pay for that sexual satisfaction. Yeah. And that's where there is such a big difference between, you know, a true fin sub to a sub, like, I guess that's probably more likely a content buyer. And it's okay. Mm -hmm. I've got nothing against content buyers. Not everyone, you know, dabbles with that side of things. But, like, I think, you know, there's so much pressure on doms to really know who they are and what kind of dom they are and how to market that and also be able to express that to their subs. Well, what kind of sub are you? Oh, they need yeah. to be doing that homework too. Yeah, they don't know. Most of them don't. Like, they mm -hmm. they expect you to kind of tell them and then you're like, bitch, like, I don't know you. You're a username yeah. on my phone. Yeah. You know? It takes a while to get to know any person and especially someone online. And the thing is, too, things can change. Like, I had, um, like, one of my subs that I found online a couple of months ago. He approached me as just a sock buyer. He wanted to buy my socks. And I'm like, okay. So that's how it started off. And then it ended up turning into a full uh, Findom dynamic. And then he started doing cock. Like, there were so many different things we dabbled with because he was like, wow, I feel really safe with you to explore these different things and to see if I like them. And if I do, we'll stick to them. And if I don't like them, then we won't do them again. But I know that I feel safe to do it with you. And that was so beautiful. Like, I loved being that for them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's it's so nice when you actually get to do something like that with a sub. Um, but you can only do that with subs that are long term, you know. Not like someone Absolutely. that just like pops in one night and then, you know, leaves. <laughs> yeah, no way. Like yeah. they've, they've got to be completely committed mm -hmm. to that journey. And that's what I mean by like I – if they don't know what they want like at all when they come to me, then I'm probably not going to play with them because it's that little bit too inexperienced. But if they're inexperienced in the way of that they've only dabbled with like one thing, it might have been as simple as, you know, rough sex with a partner Well. I wouldn't even know how to how we're gonna say that. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of a way to say it without it. Spicy, so we can use it for you spicy too. intimacy time. Yeah. So like you know, you might have a sub that you know is that inexperienced that they've just had spicy intimate time with their vanilla girlfriend, but they're no longer with that vanilla girlfriend and they don't even know how to approach it in their normal life, and that's how they've somehow come across me. Like even if they just know that and they say, "I want to explore though." Then mm -hmm. I'll be like, cool, let's yeah. do that. Let's let's organize, you know, a dynamic. Um, but yeah, it's different with everyone. Every dynamic's different. But the main thing is respect your dom and respect yourself. And yeah. it's gonna go it's gonna go well for everyone. Definitely, definitely. What is the oddest kink, kink you've taken part in or you've seen? Oh I think I think the oddest one for me, and, like, I'm not one to kink shame at all. Like, even if it's, like, something, like, really intense, I'll just straight out be like, hey, I, that's just not for me. And if I know a dom that'll, you know, be into it, then I'll recommend someone or whatever. So I'm the last person to kink shame. But for me, I guess the most strangest one that sort of come to me um, would probably be, um, I can't remember the acronym for it, the diaper wearing. The weirdest one I've had would be I had um, a submissive come to me saying that, you know, they like to wear diapers and they want me to help them pick out diapers for them to buy online. And so they paid me for my time to pick out these diapers mm -hmm. and, yeah, and be like, yeah, this one's cute or this one would be cuter or whatever. But, like, that was something that I did one time. Because I'd never done it before. And, like, I'm such an open-minded person. I'm willing to give basically anything a go if I've never experienced before. Because sometimes you don't know until you try. Like, for a long time, I was like, ew, feet are so gross. And <laughs> now, like, foot fetish is, like, one of my biggest things. Like, for me, having my feet worshipped and also if I see a woman with sexy feet, like, I will get turned on. Yeah. So you kind of don't know until you dabble a little bit. So I give everything a go. But yeah. I don't think I would probably ever do the adult 
baby diaper shopping again. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It wasn't exactly for me. Um, I think for me, like I did, um, uh, with a sub, we dabbled into bodily things that come out of the body. I will say like bodily fluids, Yeah, <laughs> let's say. Um, you, like, are we getting into like CEI territory? No, no, I wish it okay. was CEI. No, the other side. Oh, you're talking about the other one. Yeah, the, the other brown side. one. Yes, and the yellow one. Okay. Okay. So one. So one and two. <laughs> one and two. Yes, exactly. Um, and we did like. Yeah. I, I played with like a, a couple of subs with that, and you know, I'm like, mm, not my thing though. Like, I wouldn't. I don't think. Like, if it's a long term sub, we might like you know, uh, play with that. But like, mm, it's. I don't really want to do it again. Like, nothing wrong with it. It's just not for me you know i'm like we tried it yeah. i tried it with a couple of people it's just i mean not for me <laughs> yeah like i i definitely have done the number ones and you know i i think another way we could say it would be like water sports um that mm-hmm. sort of stuff that's something that i do i do still play with um but yeah i'm i'm the same as you when it comes to number twos not for me <laughs> yeah yeah it's just it's even online you know it's just for me it's a bit too much like for me specifically nothing wrong with it though i will say that i am a person that will kink shame i don't yeah that's i like i don't agree with the sentence um of like no kink shaming because i believe that there are kinks that we should be shaming (laughs) Well, yeah, like, and that's. I think that's where it comes down to, for me, like, the only kinks I'm going to shame are things that are actually life-threatening. Mm-hmm. And when I say life-threatening, I don't mean in the way of, you know, someone got, you know, that kind of life-threatening. I also mean in the way of it could be detrimental to them. So, like, mm-hmm. age play, will not do it. Yeah. Will not do it. Because I believe that to be life-threatening. Yeah. Like, yeah, so problematic kinks for me. Like, I think most kinks do have a root that is kind of on the, like, a a lot of kinks, especially in our line of work, do have a basis in misogyny. Like, like most kinks, even the fact that, like, a lot of men want a femdom has a base in sexism. Yeah. But, you know, other problematic kinks where I'm like, for me, race play, a, a white person taking play in race play, taking part in race play Mm -hmm. for me is so freaking problematic i i just can't i'm like i am gonna shame you like if you're a white person yeah i will shame you to the ends of the earth like there is no there is no way you can tell me that like it's not problematic you as a like you know that you as a white person taking part of it there is no root in racism there there is you know taking some pleasure in it is just for me you know yeah exactly (laughs) you know when the people say no kink shaming i'm like i don't like that sentence no no there are kinks that we should be shaming like (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) which i i I agree with that apparently it's controversial i I retract my statement yes no i agree with that like there there are definitely kinks that should be shamed um Yeah. yeah Yeah. I agree. Um, but apparently that is controversial to say. Like, I've had, like, debates with people that are like, why is that controversial? Not everything is okay. Like, when did we start saying that everything is okay? And it's not about being prudish, you know. It's about saying that no. something has a problematic or harmful outcome, you know. I don't know. That's just my stance, guys. I don't know. Yeah. That's just my stance. Like, if you want me to pretend that I'm eating your family, that is fine. But, you know, <laughs> I had a sub wanting that. So, <laughs> I mean, that's yeah, fine. Exactly. Like, I, I had an amazing dynamic for a really long time with a sub who they found out that their partner was cheating on them. Yeah. And, like, I'm a real, I'm a real girl's girl, right? Mm-hmm. Real girl's girl. But this sub, basically, they didn't want to leave their relationship uh-huh. They wanted to work it out. They hadn't even confronted their partner yet that they knew that they were cheating. But basically, they wanted to kind of blow off some steam with me. So they would say things like, you know, 
I'm not going to buy her flowers today because I know that she was talking to him again, so I'm going to send them to you. <laughs> like, I I was totally all for that. Like, yeah. it made him feel better, you oh, know? Yeah. And, like, and what was really sweet is in between us playing, we would also have conversations about, you know, me reminding him that he is still, like, worthy of love and being with someone who does respect him. And if he wants to have a relationship that's completely monogamous, it is out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know so that that was a beautiful dynamic the whole uh dynamic for us was working towards um one day we would send her all of these you know transcripts of our conversations and what they have sent me instead of giving it to her Mm -hmm. the day that he finally confronts her and leaves her oh whether he was actually going to do that whether he was or not I don't believe he really was because of the conversations that we had he he made me believe that this was purely, I guess, like fantasy role play kind of thing. But I don't know what's going to happen on the other end because you never really do. Yeah. And it- that's where like when it comes to, you know, things like consensual non-consent and exposure and, you know, B-mail and things like that, like it can get out of hand real quick. Like it's a very fine line. So you've really got to know what you're doing. And that's what scares me when I see baby doms posting about doing, you know, exposure and B-mail and they have no idea what they're doing or, like, you know, getting a subs card and going shopping with it. Oh, like, yeah. that scares the absolute daylights out of me. Yeah, honestly, like, I don't I do not do blackmail. The only thing close to blackmail I do is where I'm like, I do not want to know any of your info. I am stating here clearly that I do not know anything about you. Um, we can pretend that I know things about you. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Because you can get into legal trouble. It doesn't matter if they consent. Like, Mm -hmm. the law won't see it that way. So I'm like, no, I am telling you right now, I do not know anything about you. I do not know, like, I know zero things about you. I am pretending to know. Like, I'll make sure that I exactly like, this. No, most subs will be, you know, they'll get turned off and they'll be like, no, no, I want like the real thing. I'm like, well, you ain't getting it here. <laughs> like, I'm, yeah, I'm not yeah, about to exactly. go to jail for your for your kink. OK, <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Like, I can definitely get the rush. And that's why, like, you know, I do definitely dabble with it. But um, there's just smart ways to go about it, you know. And like an example that I'd like to say, you know, subs, if they they like the idea of B-mail, but they don't actually want to put themselves at risk or their dom at risk. It could be something like this. Like I have a sub that when we do that kind of play, he gives me, you know, the name of his boss and at his grocery store job, he doesn't work at a grocery store. (laughs) You know what I mean? So he makes up his own fake Uh persona of, you know, and this fake life made up or it will be to contact his parents when his parents actually aren't alive anymore and things like that, you know. Yeah. Like there are ways to kind of still itch that scratch and still, you know, play with that, you know, fetish or kink that doesn't have to actually put you at risk. And yeah. that's what people need to remember. Like, and that's the thing, when something's on the internet, even if you're doing like an exposure retweet game or something like that, like, you know, a little flash retweet game, that's still going to be there forever, even though it's been taken down. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And definitely. people don't remember that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're playing yeah. with fire. Yeah, exactly. Like, you can get into trouble. And, you you know, people need to stay safe. Tell mm-hmm. me a little bit about the, like, CNC. Tell us a little bit about that. So, CNC, consensual non-consent. So, I've had a couple of subs who, you know, when, you, when you're in a long-term dynamic, you really get to know each other. And you will share things about yourselves, experiences. And, like, some people, you know, purely engage in kink and fetishes purely for the pleasure. Some people use it as a form of healing. And I, you know, in my vanilla life, previously used to work in mental health. I also worked in neuromarketing. But working in mental health, um, I guess I've kind of got some sort of tools in my belt that, You know, I'm pretty good with dealing with subs who do have mental health issues or, you know, have past traumas. So I have had a lot of subs come to me with past traumas after a while. Like, you know, we've been working on a dynamic and now they feel comfortable enough to share them with me. So we will do, um, you know, like role play. Mm -hmm. So that'll be a way of doing the whole consensual, not consent 
sort of thing. But when we do a play like that, if we do a scene like that, we we go through it, you know, from top to bottom before we even engage and start yeah. so that we're really following the lines. Like it is literally like a script and sometimes it is an actual script that is being followed um, because it's something you've got to be so careful, not just like legally, but also you've got to be very, very careful, um, you know, for their well-being as well as your and as well as your own, because like sometimes it's some pretty dark stuff. It can get very, very dark and consensual non-consent is not something that should be practiced mm-hmm. if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. And it's a very controversial topic, CNC. It's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, especially for vanilla p- people. Um, and I think generally, if you don't lay out all the rules and, you know, the script and everything, it's something you need to tread carefully because it can, like, psychologically, both parties, like, influence mm-hmm. both parties, you know? I remember reading, like, a Reddit story of this girl. Her and her boyfriend, they did, like, a CNC scene. And their boyfriend really, like, afterwards, like, you know, he was supposed to be, like, the perpetrator, per se, um, in the scene. And he really, like, went to a dark place after it. And from what I was... Oh, yeah. yeah. and from what I was reading, they didn't really lay... Like, I'm not sure if... She didn't really say if they did, but it, they didn't really lay... It didn't seem like they laid down a script. Also, it seemed like... She said that she didn't pester him at all. She just asked him and he said yes because he wanted to make her happy. But it also seemed kind of like he put her wants over his needs. And that in itself is a Mm -hmm. mistake. You know, of course, you want to you know make your partner happy, but you can't put their wants over your needs. Absolutely. Definitely not. It's and that's where, yes, there's the whole like female supremacy, you know, the dom is above the sub, but what it all comes down to really is being equals when it comes to this stuff. Yeah. Um, when it comes to planning play. <laughs> yeah. You need to also make sure that you're not pressuring people, you know, especially something like that. You need to make sure that, you you know, consent means that you ask, they say, no, okay, that's it. You know, you don't pressure, you don't make someone feel guilty or anything like that. Exactly. And that is why it's called consensual non-consent. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> that's the difference. Mm-hmm. And that's what some people tend to forget. And that's the scary part. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think that sort of like goes into this is where aftercare is important. You know, there's always, you know, the debates. <laughs> Every couple of weeks I see it going nuts on Twitter about should we be doing aftercare? Should we not? That sort of thing. Yes, yes, and yes, we should. But there is a time and a place. Like if mm-hmm. I'm doing something like CNC, then absolutely there's going to be aftercare. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. There is no denying that. Do I need to provide aftercare for doing foot worship? Probably not. Unless they have something, you know, really attached to it. Or if there's humiliation in it. Yes, or if it's Mm -hmm. humiliation attached, something like that. Like, again, as we've said a thousand times, every dynamic is different. And that's why these things need to be talked about in the beginning. And that that's what goes back to that whole original vetting process. Do they, like, that's a conversation you need to have. And not just the first time you talk and interact, say, do you, are you someone who requires aftercare? How do you practice aftercare? It's something, it's a conversation that needs to keep happening because you might be in a dynamic where they never needed aftercare and then all of a sudden they do because maybe yeah. the dynamics changed. Or maybe something in their life has changed and that's going to now require them to have aftercare. Like there's, it's different for everyone and doms need to be practicing aftercare more too because that's something that I see a lot that they're not. And just because we're not the ones being like humiliated, for example, it still takes a lot out of you humiliating someone. Yeah, I think when I see like discourses, like discussions or debates about this, usually it will come from people that have no doming experience outside of online findom, like instadoms. Feel like yeah. any person that has been doing BDSM or taking part in BDSM outside of this instadom world would be like, mm-hmm. of course, you're going to do aftercare if there's, you know, A, B, C, D, whatever. I haven't, at least until now, I haven't seen any dom online that you know has been into the bdsm community say 
no, you don't need aftercare. No aftercare. I've never seen that until like the only people oh. I've seen that is people that are not really into the BDSM. Yeah, and they're purely to come over from like TikTok to do Findom or something like that. Yeah, yeah, in Saddam. I'm seeing that too. Yeah, but then I'm also seeing like it's it's weird because there's some there are some big doms out there that I've had private conversations with, and to me they have come across as very I guess ethical, um, and practice aftercare and things like that. But I will see you know tweets from them saying otherwise. So I'm like, are these like bait tweets? And, mm -hmm. like, I understand that, you know, sometimes being controversial is what makes you go viral. I get it. But at the same time, people need to think about the mark, like, you know, the footprint that you're leaving on the internet because that yeah. shit can come back to bite you. Yeah. Also, I think it might also be, they might be playing into the kink of, like, you know, a lot of fin subs, they don't want any aftercare. They want to be literally used in quotes and discarded. Yeah. So they might be trying to yeah. play in that as well. Yeah. I think it's just, um, it's, it's, it's about the wording and being consistent with, I guess, your own brand and who you are and what your beliefs are and things like that. Because I will have a post that will say, you know, about draining someone dry. But am I really going to take every single dime that they have so that they cannot feed themselves and they end up homeless? Hell no. Because I yeah. want them to keep being able to come back to me. If they end up like that, they're not going to have internet. They can't contact me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know? No, it's exactly that. Sorry. Like, exactly that. Yeah. Like, I won't, um, like, I'll, I'll tweet something like, let's ruin your wallet or something. But I don't actually take part in ruin. I don't like it. Yeah, I'll still ask for a budget limit. <laughs> yeah exactly exactly so it's like more of the differentiating between the character tweets or you know like fantasy tweets versus actual reality let's touch a little bit on before you said you're ethical and non-ethical at the same time tell us a little bit about that i think the more i think about it there really shouldn't be an ethical or non-ethical Thing. And I had a really interesting conversation today with a group of doms and subs about it. And it's something that I think they said something along the lines of it was created by subs, this whole doms being ethical or non-ethical. And I really, truly feel that you should just be smart, yeah. be smart and, you know, make choices wisely, use your brain, you know, common sense does really go a long way. And another conversation we had today is that sadly, especially the online Findom world, I'm starting to see it is really, really, there is a lot of people who are here that are narcissists or they are sociopaths and mm -hmm. they do use this as a way to do that. And so it can be a very dangerous playground. So for me, yeah. I just stay true to me. I stay true to me and what I believe in. And just because I believe something to be ethical, someone else might think it's not. Like everyone is different. Mm -hmm. So I don't really think there is such thing as being ethical or non-ethical. But mm -hmm. if I had to put a label on it, I would say that I am. Because I give a shit about my subs. I do. Yeah. And because I'm not going to give my time to someone I don't give a shit about. Yeah. Yeah. No, no amount of money will make me do that because... You know, my my time and my life, there is only one of them. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. For me, I, I do like to promote ethical fandom. Um, but I will say there's a but. Most subs I see that complain about unethical fandom, it's not about unethical fandom. It's about them not having the ability to control themselves and just finding one addiction of self-destruction and not you know, being adult. Exactly. And that's not my responsibility. It's not your responsibility. It's no Dom's responsibility. That's where the sub needs to take responsibility. Yeah. Um, you know, there's addictions in all walks of life, you know, from drinking to Findom. It is up to you what your limits are and when you've had enough and when you're willing to change and where you're going to cut yourself off. A Dom can't be in control of that. So, when I think of ethical, you know, femdom or fem findom, when I think of it being ethical, I just think of it in the way of that you're not going to actually harm someone in their real life mm -hmm. to a degree that will actually ruin them. Yeah. 
that's what I think it is. And that's what I stand by. And I do talk about it a lot. Um, Yeah. Yeah. And for me, I do like to ask about like financial limits. Um, But I will Mm -hmm. say that if a sub fucking pisses me off, I will push him until he wants to leave. Oh, yeah. Me too. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So like, I will literally just be like, he's pissed me off. I don't want to talk to him again. I'm just going to drain him until it's too much for him and he doesn't want to be here anymore. Absolutely. You might be like, Lara, you're being a little bit vindictive. Yes, I am. If I think you're rude, if I think you're self-serving, if I think you're disrespecting me, then all bets are off, meaning that I will just keep telling you to send until you leave. Yeah, exactly right. And this is where it still goes back to them still being in control because they could just log off. Yeah. They could just block you. But if they're going to keep sending and you're telling them to send to you out of spite, but they're going to keep sending, that's on them. Yeah. Ex- I mean, unless they're like drunk or something, then that's like a whole nother discussion where I'm like, I'm cutting you off and I'm oh, blocking yeah. you. Yeah, that, yeah. That's that's a whole nother can of worms about yeah. whether they're under the influence and playing. Yeah. Sometimes you won't know if they are. That's also another thing, though. I'm not I'm not talking about in talks because in talks is something you do, like have a conversation before it starts and all that. You know, I'm talking just like about if they're I know they're drunk and, you know, then I'll I'll cut it off because, you know, when someone is drunk, they're not really thinking straight. Exactly. I have a sub actually that does um, like to drunk text me (laughs) and I just say (laughs) I'm not talking to you until tomorrow. Send me a copy to wake up to since you've disturbed my sleep. I will talk to you tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, because I I know that he can get very very destructive, and not just financially, but in other ways too. Mm-hmm. And so that's me mm-hmm. doing my part, and you know, laying down the rules and telling him what to do. Mm-hmm. Stop drinking. Go to bed. <laughs> send me a coffee. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Being a dom doesn't always have to involve draining someone's wallet or making them punch themselves in the balls. It can also be in ways that better themselves too. Like I have a sub that has had a drinking problem and I've told him no more. Mm -hmm. And obviously it's up to him deep down whether he's going to stop or not. But because I'm actively telling him not to do it, Mm -hmm. it helps him. So you can be helpful. You can use your power for good, not just evil. Yeah. And also FinDom is not just about draining. FinDom can be, for example, to organize like a sub's financials or, you know, get them to pay things that they should be paying. And because it's financial domination, so controlling a person's finances. It's just that mostly you'll see drains, A, because, you know, most FinDoms are InstaDoms from what I've seen online. And secondly, because, you know, that's what has become popular, I guess, because it's... (coughs) It's got a little bit of an essence of danger in it. Yes, and that is something that I have definitely found with the online side of things when it comes to FinDom, that there are definitely more subs who are kind of here for a session or a scene or a drain or something like that, or just to reimburse a bill or something like that, but not the actual classic financial domination. And classic financial domination, well, that's what I call it anyway, um, to me is like the ultimate form, the ultimate dynamic. And it's a dynamic that I love most. And I've had subs who have come to me after they've had really bad gambling addictions Mm -hmm. and they've turned to something like FinDom to be able to have their dom control their money so they won't go and spend it all and ruin (laughs) their life or have their families leave them. Yeah. So that's where financial domination can be so powerful and so incredible, but I don't see it practiced as much online and maybe i'm just in like the wrong place or something because i'm still new to the online side of things Mm -hmm. but yeah a lot of people don't even know that that that's what financial domination actually kind of is yeah it's you know any sort of control of the other person's money you know and in different ways yeah i don't i haven't seen it either like mostly i'll see my timeline is just full of mostly insta doms and then here and there you'll see some actual dominatrixes like dungeon dominatrixes and Uh then some like you know fin doms that have been in the scene for a while which with them you will see different other things did you see my tweet uh that tweet that kind of went a little bit semi-viral um that i was like talking about this insta dom that was like I don't get how you don't get sends, blah, blah, blah. 
And I wrote a tweet where I was like, be for real, no one gets sends from the beginning. Or Did you see that? No, I didn't say that. Okay, well, <laughs> a girl uh, commented under that tweet and she was such a fin, like such an insta dom, using the word dom very loosely, very loosely, mm-hmm. okay? She was basically more a cam girl that uses dom uh, in her username style. <laughs> but okay she, yeah and and what do i mean by this and again i'm not saying there's nothing wrong guys with being a cam girl i'm just saying that that's like basically kind of the avenue she took where it was photos just like sexual photos of her let's say showing off body parts and she wrote into my my comments there that you can't be a findom if you're fat or older or what? basically ugly. Yeah. Like, you need to be pretty and thin. I was like, ouch. Someone outed themselves that they know nothing wow. about the industry. Like, zero. What? At like, all. She reposted that comment. I was like, someone just outed themselves. Some quote unquote dom out of themselves that they have no clue about the bdsm community and in the you know and the industry and all that girl of the biggest fin doms do not look anything like what you would expect expect as a social norm for beauty absolutely what are you on about the the most successful doms and fin doms are much much older like they're in their 60s mm-hmm. and 50s and they exactly and they do not look like um i don't know monica bellucci okay they look the exact opposite of her like yeah w- what are yeah. you on about 100 it blew my mind how how much lack of information she had on the of on what findom was on what doming was where she thought that I don't know, like being a Findom equals being a Victoria's Secret model. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I think I think it's absolutely crazy because like it, it really goes to show there's such a big difference between what a Findom is and also having pretty privilege. They are two different things. There are so many people out there who will go, you know, viral for being beautiful and mm-hmm. they will have, you know, subs in their DM sending them money. Does that make them a Dom? Mm-hmm. No. It doesn't. They just have pretty privilege. It's a massive difference. And you know what? I make more money when I video with my subs with Mm -hmm. no makeup on. I've just woken up in the morning. I have made more money online when I'm like that than having all my makeup, my hair done, everything like that. Because that's not what it's about. Mm -hmm. And I've had subs like, you know, where because I I sleep naked. And so like we'll start doing like a video drain and they'll be like, oh, uh, sorry, mistress, would you mind if you actually put a shirt on because I'm worried that the blanket might fall down? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's so sweet, but it's not, It's that's what they need to realize. It's not just about being pretty or getting naked. Like that, that's probably the last things that are important when it comes to this sort of dynamic. Yeah, nah. And I don't even know if she actually does make a lot of money because I was like, girl, I am pretty sure from what I've seen, I make more money than you and I am fat. So your theory is proven wrong just by you saying that on my profile absolutely absolutely what are you on about one phenom that i follow i don't remember her name but she's like a bigger woman right she makes like so much money and she's like a bigger woman Mm -hmm. because that's powerful in itself Mm -hmm. you know a big woman like damn like that she's got power already yeah and it was just i found it so interesting how little information she had about the industry where she felt so comfortable writing this publicly you know and showing the world that she is literally the epitome of what people would call an insta dom you know? oh yeah i i had <laughs> i had a um a bit of a my first i guess drama with mm-hmm. a random dom they call themselves a dom but with what they said i i'm questioning that on twitter the other day actually and she Ooh. called me out saying that i was a fake dom all because I said that I gave a shit about my subs. <laughs> well, you've just proved that you're a fake dom because you care about them. <laughs> I was like, what? Please, please. What? The, the only way you could like say, say louder that you don't know anything about being a dominant is by putting it on the billboard, girl. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It just made absolutely no sense. And yeah, 
It was very, very strange. A few people had seen it. So afterwards, I'd set, like posted a tweet myself and I said, hey, guys, I thought I should come clean since goddess won't say the rest of the name. Mm -hmm. outed me i'm not a real dom because i support boycotting starbucks and i offer aftercare to my subs (laughs) (laughs) and it was funny it was it was funny (laughs) oh my god that was freaking hell is she like popular does she have a big profile um she had like just over a thousand followers so she's got more than me like i'm i don't know how long she's been around she's got me blocked so i can't actually see (laughs) how long she's had her profile for or anything like that. But like, that's, it's the same thing. It just goes back to, it doesn't matter how many followers someone has. It doesn't explain, you know, if they're experienced or not, because like me, maybe I'm not so experienced with navigating online, but I've done this in my personal life in the real world for Mm -hmm. a decade now, you know, and I only have at the moment 813 followers on Twitter. But am I doing well enough that this is all I do for my income? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, yes, I am. Girl, and I you're you're followers. growing much faster than I did. Like I, I had last like in like in a year 300, like nothing. Yeah. Now this year, I've kind of grown a little bit more. But this year, I've actually been posting as well. Yeah, that comes down to is you just got to be posting. Yeah. And I've also been posting better content. Like whatever I would post previously was please no one scroll to see. It was bad. (laughs) (laughs) It was bad, okay? Um, Not that right now my, you know, my, like, every tweet is perfect. No, but I do give more of a shit, you know? Like, I I pay a little bit more attention and all that. So you're you're growing, girl. You're growing. You're growing. I mean, you're going to surpass me in no time. So I fired nearly every single online sub in the past week. (laughs) Really? Why? Um, So I... I don't know. It's like something was in the water and Mm -hmm. they all were getting really, I guess, bratty and just thinking of themselves. And I called them out on it, gave them a chance to fix it, Mm -hmm. didn't fix it. And I was like, you know what? I'm done. I'm not even going to go on like a three strike policy. Like I'm, I'm done. There is only one I've let return Mm -hmm. out of the couple that I got rid of. So right now, like, I've had my worst week when it Mm -hmm. comes to Findom online. Mm -hmm. But am I worried? Absolutely not. Because all it has done is open me up to have more time Mm -hmm. to, you know, vet new subs and find the dynamics that I want and deserve. Yeah. Do do you uh, stream or do you only do Twitter? How do you... What do you do? So at the moment, at the moment, it's mostly primarily Twitter and Reddit. Mm -hmm. um when i first started i was doing some camming but strictly doing bdsm femdom style camming yeah um did that i think maybe for like two months because i was like oh i should probably try this um because i was an actual cam girl when i was about 18 (laughs) so i thought why why can't i either it will attract the right people or it won't like it is what it is so I did that for a bit, but um, yeah, at the moment it's strictly basically Twitter, Reddit for online. Yeah, I'm only just starting to like kind of even work out how loyal fans works. Like I just got my first payout from that. It's all new to me. <laughs> loyal fans is good. Like it doesn't have a lot of people, but if you actually like stream regularly and stuff, like you can you can make money. Yeah, no, I have I have like one place that I used to make a lot of money, like when I would cam on them. So I'm thinking maybe while things are a bit quiet, I might dive back and see if it's something I want to do again. It's been a nice little break. Like I've just had a lot of me time and like I'm renovating a house at the moment. I'm flipping it. So like it's it's been a nice little quiet week for me. Um, it's exactly what I needed. But like the moment, you know, anything starts to nosedive a little bit, before I know it, it's already shooting back up. So I, I trust in the process and, you know, what I put out. And, yeah, that's all you can do. Because, like, I'm in a lot of, like, I guess, uh, FinDom sort of support groups and, you know, group chats with other DOMs and they'll be stressing out and saying, you know, what the hell? I haven't had a send in, like, a week or two weeks. And, you know, and I'm like, let that go. Use this time where you're not interacting with subs. If you have nobody serving you, use this time to make the best content of your life or put together a business plan. And I think, honestly, that is the only reason why I've done as well as I have and has made as much money as I have online in such a short period of time is because I have that background in marketing. 
Ooh, do you? Yeah. So with that, it's very hard because it was completely different side of marketing, <laughs> not this kind. Mm-hmm. So you have to kind of translate it to kind of work for this. But I think because I already have that marketing mind, that marketing mentality, that's what's given me the upper hand. Well, it makes sense now why your your banner was so good. <laughs> that's just a little canva banner but thank you (laughs) the reason why i did that banner and i did it before you did my profile because i had watched your original video and you were talking about um or the video before mine or something and you were talking uh about audrey's Mm -hmm. and you know like having photos and things like that and i was like shit i need to do that because it used to literally just be my name with my leg like so like you know it didn't really show much I don't even advertise, you know, play with my legs or anything like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it should have been feet at least. Yeah, yeah. So I, I took that advice from you actually to Aww. make that banner. Oh, yeah. I have like a new roster of baby doms uh, to do the profile reviews because I was a little bit checking their profiles and I saw that like it was obvious that they hadn't seen the videos, even though I state in the guidelines that you need to see the videos and. If you think I won't know, I will know because I will see that you have not done what I said. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And a lot of like them. Like age verified. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Be age verified. Be age verified. Also, like, for example, a lot of their banners are just random ass shit, like colors or a phrase or something. And I'm like, just because you see other big doms doing that does not mean that you can do that. They are big doms. They have massive followings. They've been online since like the Stone yes. Age. Okay. They've already they've already made like their footprint and people know who they are that they can then slack off and do, you know, half ass tweets and, you know, mm-hmm. half ass photos and things like that because they already have their following or they've already got their subs. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. So I was like I was looking and I was like, ooh, these girls have not done the guidelines because it's obvious it was like a lot of things i was like that i point out in like the video so i was like so i wrote like a thing you know uh girls you need to do that and i will know and if you do not do that i'm not reviewing your profile and just because basically it's just there's no point in me reviewing the profile if it's the same issues because in every video i'm just repeating myself you know it's not beneficial to anyone so you know i'm like go watch video one and three and then I will review your profile. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't exactly. want exactly. I don't want in any, every video saying "fix your banner, fix your banner." Fi-, like how many times can I say it? You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. And I think one of the things I come across too is there are some like Insta doms and TikTok doms who are now out there selling, you know, manuals for baby doms, and it's the. Like, I've had a few of them show me what's mm-hmm. in them, and it just blows my mind. There, there is no, not really any useful information. There is nothing about being a dom at all in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and it prompted me to go ahead, and I wrote, like, this massive-ass post on Reddit, and I titled it, The Reason Why You're Making No Money. Because <laughs> I knew that would grab them. You need to and do that for Twitter. I, yeah. Well, I need to be able to get Twitter Premium, and the only reason I don't have it is because I have an Android phone, and it won't it won't let me verify because I can't send a message to Twitter to like finish the verification. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so annoying. I need to put my SIM card in like an iPhone or something and finish setting it up, and then I'll get Premium and I'll be able to post it. But. I ended up doing like a little audio um, like podcasting kind of thing because I was going to start doing podcasts because I like mm-hmm. to yap as well. <laughs> um, and I basically just like read out that entire post that I did on Reddit because it's top to bottom, just everything you could possibly need to know starting out and the realities of what this is and why you're actually not making any money. Yeah. I- it did quite well. I'm sure it did. I mean, I'm sure it did. Like, there is not good information out there, you know? Most of the guides and stuff, that manuals that I've seen, there's nothing about doming. It's all about make a Twitter. It's not even about marketing. It's just like, make a Twitter, take good photos, okay? (laughs) You know, maybe some will be verify yourself with like LF or OF or something, okay? And, I mean, I feel like these are things that you should be able to figure out yourself, you know? So... 
Yeah. Yeah. And exactly. You know. And like, I had so many comments, people saying, you know, this information you have here is like the holy grail. What you have posted here is a thousand times more useful than what I just paid $50 for this bloody manual. Yeah. And I'm like, well, it's here for free. And that's why I did it because I know that there are genuine people coming into this who have this kink and want to explore it and want to be part of it. Who can blame them? It's fucking awesome here. We have the best 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 like you know community the best dynamics the best job for some you know this is incredible so i don't blame them for wanting to be part of it but if you're gonna do it do it the right way and that's why i put that information out there for free so uh, ag thank you so much for coming to the podcast we had to rearrange this podcast this episode guys like three times or something um i might have slept in once like don't judge me (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes i i definitely have been terrible with organizing it too but i'm glad it's finally happened it was yes. an absolute blast it was it was uh i will leave her um twitter link thingy in the description guys uh go show her some love and we are actually planning on doing a review of a podcast from another fandom. we are planning that yep yep so, you know, yes, that, that, that will be on YouTube, though. 